OK, yeah. All right, it's done. Useless. OK, so everybody who's in the back, come on front. We're going to do a good old-fashioned Blackboard lecture where we do everything on the board. So sitting in the back won't be like a good visibility. You want to sit up front for this. So we were talking about the thin lens equation and how we can use the thin lens equation to basically solve for where my image is located, the height of the image, whether or not the image is real or imaginary. And we had this example previously with um, converging lenses. And now we're going to talk about diverging lenses. So the last example was with like a microscope. Now we're going to talk about vision, how we can correct for vision. So we've got somebody who's nearsighted, and the lenses that correct their vision are diverging lenses. To estimate the focal length of the lenses, we can hold one lens 24 centimeters above a coin on a table. So we hold the lens above the coin on the table, and then look through the coin, look at the coin through the lens, and we can estimate that the diameter of the coin that we see is two-thirds the actual diameter of the coin. So what is the focal length of these lenses? OK, so let's, let's draw a picture of this. OK, so I've got my, uh, and this is the example uh, with Alejandra. She's got a virtual image of the coin. Um, OK, where's my chalk? Here we go. So let, first of all, let's draw what a diverging lens looks like. A diverging lens looks like this. Two concave lenses up next to each other. And then we go through like this. We do one of those. We draw a line through the axis. And then we're given in the problem that the, she sees an image of the coin that's two-thirds the height of the actual coin. So we have a magnification here. So we can use the magnification to sort of figure out, let me draw this a little bit taller. There we go. We can use this magnification to actually um, solve for our properties of the problem. I want to get some chalk that's different colors here. Do we have any colored chalk? That's sad. We don't have any colored chalk. I wanted to sort of <clears throat> make these ray tracing figures different colors. Oh, well. All right. We're just stuck with boring white chalk. That's not, that's not the end of the world. We can make that work. OK. So we, we have this rule. We take it from the top, right? But then look, it does something different. So we split this thing down the middle. And we say, OK, at the midpoint of my lens, that's when something's going to happen. Now remember, with the converging lens, it went downwards. Look what happens with the diverging lens. It goes like this. We have a different rule for the diverging lens. For the diverging lens, their first ray comes like that. And then we have another ray that goes through the middle. And it goes straight out like that in a straight line. And then our final ray, that's the one that goes through the center and doesn't go anywhere else after that. That rule is always the case, right? We have to have at least two rays. Here we have three. So we have one that goes straight across, and then it goes bloop, and then another one that goes straight through. And then this second one is somewhere in between. And it goes straight out. OK, and then we have a focal point. We have two focal points for this problem. And we have to figure out where is my focal point and where's my image going to form. OK, so this is, this is where things get kind of weird for this. So the focal point, if you'll recall, 
it's where we have our rays get traced back to. So this ray gets traced back to the focal point, like that. And then I have this ray gets traced back like that. And then finally, we've got this other ray. Uh, it gets traced like this. out to this focal point. So we've got a focal point here, and a focal point here, and an object here. And my image of the coin is right here. So I draw a big, fat coin here. And then my original coin is like this. You can, draw, you can draw the object always as like an arrow because it's easier to draw an arrow and how an arrow changes in size than like a coin, but that works too. Now, what she's seeing, she's not seeing this. She's seeing this. It's upright, so it's not, it's not um, inverted, and it's imaginary because it's actually not the light rays are not coming from off of it. See here, if we trace the rays back, and it's like the rays get traced back to here, but the rays don't originate from the object like they do for a person. See, I'm looking at you, right? And all the rays bouncing off of you, that's actually where you're located. That, this is imaginary because it's like the rays aren't originating from where we're seeing the image. So we're looking at this coin, and it's imaginary, but it's not really any different than if you're like looking at an object in the water and it looks closer to you than it really is. It's the same kind of idea there. So it's not really that weird when I say it's imaginary, but we'll, we'll talk more about that. Okay, so anyway, we've got our image here and we know we have this relationship for magnification. So magnification, M is equal to S prime, it's a minus sign, S prime over S. And we know what S is, because we know the magnification. And we're given in the problem that the magnification is 2 thirds. So we have 2 thirds equals minus S prime over S. And then we can use that to solve for the object. So the problem says she sees a virtual image of the coin. She holds the lens 24 centimeters above a coin on the table. So we know the object distance is 24, 24 centimeters, because that's where the object is located away from the lens. Remember, object distance is 24 centimeters. And what's the image distance? That's what we're solving for. So 2 thirds of 24, 2 thirds of 24 centimeters is equal to minus S prime. Okay, so then we get then that it's going to be 16 centimeters minus 16 centimeters. So S prime is equal to minus 16 centimeters. Okay, so 16 centimeters here. And then, so we've got that. We know S is 24 centimeters. Now we can find the focal length because we have our um, lens maker's equation. So what's the lens maker's equation tell us? Let's go back to that previous slide. The lens maker's equation says one over F is equal to one over S plus one over S prime. So I know S and I know S prime. So one over F is equal to 1 over 24 plus 1 over negative 16. Now, don't let that negative sign fool you. Yes, it's a negative quantity, but it's on the same side as the object. The negative sign indicates that it's imaginary. So we've got a negative sign there. 
So when we do that, we get that the answer for the focal length is f is equal to minus 48 centimeters. So it's 48 centimeters from here, 48 centimeters here, and 48 centimeters here. OK, great. So that's our, so the focal length is negative, as we expect, because it's negative for a diverging lens. And we'll see in the next chapter, this is a reasonable value for the focal length of a corrective lens for a person who's moderately nearsighted. So all you future optometrists, this is going to be the type of lens that you're going to give to somebody who's nearsighted. That's the, t that's the basic design. Now, I think we do like compound lenses that are a little more complicated than that, but that's the basic physics of it, the basic idea of how it works. OK, so um, let's, let's see. That's a question that, you know, this is an interesting question. So this is on the slides. I know we don't have projector view, but like, let's say I have a light bulb. And the image of the bulb on the viewing screen is a little blurry because the screen is slightly in front of the image plane. What does it mean? What does it mean if my image is blurry? Like if I have a projector screen and my image is blurry, it means I'm not at the focal point. I'm outside of the focal point. So, so what it means is like, so right here, this is where the focal point is, where all the rays divert, where all the rays converge. It's like intersection, intersection, intersection of all these rays here. If I try to look at my lens, my object here, it's going to be there. There's going to be rays coming still, but it's going to be blurry because these lines, they don't all intersect. So if you're looking at an object and you want to see the image of it and you look at it someplace else, like here, it's going to be blurrier than if it's right here at the focal point. So the projectors, when you have a projector, you have something and you want to focus an image with light, you want that focal point to be, you want it to be right at the focal point. The distance of the screen is at the focal point. So to focus the image, do you move the lens away or slightly towards the bulb if it's a little blurry? You move it away from because you want to decrease S prime to bring the image plane onto the screen. So um, it depends on, that's a specific question. Like, I know you can't read that text, so you don't know what I mean. But the basic idea is that if, I, if it's blurry, I need to move it away from further back so that it, those light rays are at the focal point now. So that's, that's the answer for that one. OK. Now we're going to talk about spherical mirrors. So we've got curved mirrors, such as those used in security and rear view mirrors that can be used to form images. And their images can be analyzed with ray diagrams similar to those used with lenses. So we'll consider the case of spherical mirrors where we have a surface where it's a section of a sphere. So let's see what that looks like for a spherical mirror. So we've got our concave mirror. And then we've got our axis here. This is sort of like where the axis of the focal plane is. So I've got my focal length here. And that's going to be f. And that's defined by where all the rays are focused. So this is a really nice way to see how focal point works. Rays come in, and they're unfocused. They reflect off of this. And they go right through that focal point. Then I have another ray comes in parallel. And it goes right through that focal point. And then finally, we have other rays going this way. Bounces off, goes right through that focal point. Another ray comes in like this, goes right through that focal point. And so this is where the image gets focused for a concave mirror. Parallel rays that are not focused get converged and focused on the focal point. 
And then, so rays parallel to the optical axis reflect from the surface of the mirror so as to pass through a single point on the optical axis. And then the focal point of the mirror, that's the focal point of the mirror. The focal length is the distance from the mirror surface to the focal point. So a concave mirror is analogous to a converging lens, but it has only one focal point instead of two, like a converging lens has two. But that's a little confusing because with this lens here, this is not a converging lens, this is a diverging lens, even though it's concave. So you have to pay careful attention to these different lenses and stuff to know what's going on here. Okay. What does this look like, though, in terms of image formation? How does this work for forming an image? So let's begin with the case of, let's begin with the case of a, I wish this board moved better. All right, there we go. Let's start with the case where the object's distance from the mirror is greater than the focal length, because that's going to change things up. We know that images become like imaginary when they're inside the focal point, right? Imaginary image. Same idea here with the spherical mirror. So let's start with the case where um, we have that. OK, so I'm going to draw this out. We got this image of a tree. It's like, it's, here's the axis here. Okay, we've got our tree. Okay, and then we want to figure out where is this image going to actually end up? So I've got my concave mirror like this. Okay, this is a nice drawing, a better picture of what we had than before even. And then we've got our mirror plane. This is as if the mirror was a flat mirror. So this is our mirror plane. And then I'm going to have my rays coming from the object. And that's important because what these rays do is they give me information about the object. They bounce off of the object. And that's how I see an object is I see the rays of light coming from them. Does that mean that like my eyes and my brain have to like focus every single thing that I see to a point in my brain? Yes, your eyes do that. Your eyes are like a lens that focuses everything that you see into your brain. And what's crazy is the image that your brain produces, that your eyes produce, is upside down. And our brains flip it up, right side up, automatically. It's built into your software, okay? Because by the physics of this, we know that the image that your brain produces through the eyes as a lens is actually upside down. OK, so let's see how that works for this one. OK, so we've got, this, we've got this light. It bounces off like that. And then it goes through this focal point, And then it keeps going to infinity. Then we've got another light ray that goes through the focal point like this. and bounces off and then goes like straight across. And that's basically all you need. Well, actually, no, we need a couple more. OK, so then we've got a couple more here. We're going to do um, one of them that goes like this. It bounces off and goes through like that. OK, that's pretty good. And then like, um, whoops, let's see here. So what did I do wrong? Let me think about this for a second. This is actually wrong. OK, that's straight across like that. OK. Give me a second. I need to think about this. This is weird. OK, um, let me get an eraser. Got to be precise about this. OK, so let me erase these. This takes practice. You can see <laughs> I messed this one up this time. OK, so 
So this one goes straight across, and then it goes through some focal point here, and then it keeps on going. And then we've got another one that goes like this. It bounces off, and then it goes through like, uh, but it misses the focal point. And it goes like along like here. OK, that's tricky. OK, OK, now I see it. So then the focal point here is where these two rays go through. So the first ray and the last ray go through like this. And then they bounce off. And they help. Whoops, it goes like, actually, it goes like this. And then goes through like there. OK, and then the intersection where these three rays are that's where our tree image is. And it's upside down, just like the image of the world is in our brains. Not in our brains, but in our eyes before our brains flip it right side up. So this is the real, and it's a real image. Why is it a real image and not an imaginary image? It's a real image because the same rays that bounce off of the object and come from the object are later converged and used to form the image of my object here. That's not the case here. Here, the rays that bounce off, they go off to infinity. They don't come back. So it's imaginary because in order to figure out where the image is, we have to trace back these dotted lines. And these dotted lines are what converge to a point. So that's what makes it imaginary. Here, it's real because it's like same ray, boom, boom. Form, used to form my image here. So this is real. OK. And then we have our focal point. So our focal point is here. That's f. And then I've got my uh, distances here. I've got my s prime. That's my distance to my image. S prime is right here. Um, and then I've got my distance to my object. That's this big distance, S. It goes all the way from here all the way down to there. So S is from here to here. S prime is from here to here. F is from here to there. OK, so those are all of my quantities for that. So the rules are that a ray parallel to the x-axis reflects through the focal point. A ray through the focal point reflects parallel to the axis, parallel to the axis. And then a ray striking the center of the mirror reflects at an equal angle on the opposite sides of the axis. So let's see, that's going to be like this. Oops, sorry, let me make this a little better. Ray striking through the center, like that and that. Equal angles there. <clears throat> and then that's not quite right, sorry. It should go like that. OK, now we got it. OK, equal angles. So theta and theta. And it goes through, and it forms like the top part of this. OK. These r three rays also locate the image s less than f. But in that case, the image is virtual and behind the mirror. Why don't they show a picture of that? I don't like that. OK. They don't show a picture of that. That's annoying. Let me see if I can find one, and I'm going to draw it out for you. I want to show what that looks like when it's imaginary and behind the image. Oh, here we go. Here we go. OK. Perfect. Um, OK, so that's what it looks like if it's real. And it's the focal length is here, so it's behind the focal length, so it's a real image. What does it look like if it's imaginary? Let's do that on this board. OK, so we've got. Um, where's F? OK, so F is somewhere um, behind here. So F is somewhere back here. 
and then I've got my optical axis. Oh no, this is a different one. Sorry, this is a different case. So this is a, if it's a concave. We want to do, or a convex. We're going to do concave still. We're not done yet. Okay, let me fix this. Um, let's see. They don't have an example. Let me look for an example really quick on this. Okay. Spherical. Okay. Let's see. Images. Okay. Is there one? But that not that like the, um, is it going in the same way? Is it concave like this, or is it convex? Is it concave? Let me see, slide 45. OK, let me look really quick. There is, OK, yeah, that's, that's wait, like slide 45. Let's see. Uh, yes, perfect. Thank you. OK, great. So this is a little bit different. This is the example of lateral magnification. But this 